Hello friends, I want to talk to you briefly about the new nation, the holy nation, the kingdom of God. Throughout all the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, God's expressed desire is to be among his people. So when that's what he did in Genesis 3, 8, he walked with with them in the cool of the day among the trees in the garden God walked with Adam and Eve and they heard his voice they responded they spoke with him they saw him face to face that's what we are created for we are created for the beauty of the garden of Eden and for seeing God face to face and being with him believing him ad admiring him adoring him walking with him, being where he is. And that's why we suffer so much when we are away from God, when we experience things that are so far from the Garden of Eden. Wartime, misunderstandings, um, divorce, uh, hurt, abuse. Yes, we suffer so much uh, when we are lonely, when we are sick, when someone is dying, those things were not in the Garden of Eden. And we are created from love, from God's love, and we are created for love, and we are created for the beauty and for the perfection of the Garden of Eden. That's where we belong. That's why we suffer so much when we are not there. So we need to find a way back home, right? And there is one open way now, back to Eden, and it is Jesus. He says, not that he knows or can show the way, but he says that he is the way. And the way opens, the portal opens uh, when we know him. So getting eternal life is getting to know Jesus, not just know about him, but knowing him. So I invite you to come out of darkness into light. Come out of that suffering far away from God and come back home uh, and walk with us the way back to Eden, which is following Jesus and knowing him, praying to him, letting him hear what is in your heart and you hear what is in his heart to know Jesus. Uh, the Bible says that everything else is uh, scraps. Everything else is rubbish compared to knowing him. So it's worth everything. Anything you must sacrifice to know him is worth it. Yes, but uh, I wanted to talk about the holy nation. Because this is the topic through the Bible. From Genesis, where God walks with Adam and Eve in the garden, all the way to Revelation, where Eden is restored, like it's Eden city, and God again lives among his people, comes and wipes our tears away, and where we can see his face, and his name will be on our foreheads, and we will walk with him, and talk with him, and see him, and be with him. And it was always the reward when his people, with God's people, uh, obeyed him, the reward was, if you obey me, I will be with you. I will be with you. You will be my people, my nation, my kingdom, and I will be your God and I will walk among you. And when uh, we disobeyed God, we, l we lost that and we still lose that. But when we come back to him, that's our reward and his reward. And it even says in Hebrews that for the joy set before Jesus, he endured the cross. And I, I believe that the joy that was set before him, the thing that he obtained through uh, enduring the pain on the cross was that we could again be together with him in the garden and now and forever. And uh, one of the few times we hear Jesus opening up, being very vulnerable, opening up his heart uh, and showing us what's inside of him, what's his own desire, is in John 17, 23 or 24, where he says, 
just before he's going to the cross and to heaven, he says, he prays for his disciples and he says, Father, I want those you have given me to be with me. You know, to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me before the creation of the earth. So his desire is to be with us. And when Jesus walked on the earth, there was one message that also was his constant message through all the Injil, through all the gospel preaching, and it was the kingdom of God. And he even ties that as the condition for him coming back to the earth. And he says in Matthew 24, he says, and this Injil of the kingdom or this gospel, this good news of the kingdom shall be preached as a testimony to all nations and then the end will come. So it, it's not, we cannot preach whatever we want to the nations. What we shall preach is this gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom the nation, uh, the people of God who has a king. And the most important thing in any kingdom is the king. Um, he influences the culture, the language, the atmosphere, the laws. And he is the one who is revered and honored and loved and respected. So... The most important in, in the gospel of the kingdom is the king. And uh, we get to know him. And through knowing him, uh, we get his spirit in us and are being transformed back into the image that we had in the Garden of Eden, into his image. Because that's what we are predestined to be, to be like Jesus, to get that image because God created Adam and Eve in the image of God in the beginning but that image was marred was destroyed and you know God wanted his image to infiltrate the whole earth he wanted his image to fill the earth and that's why we are here that's why also the message the good news of the kingdom of God will spread uh, to all corners of the earth so that all uh, valleys and mountains and islands and city squares, hospitals, schools, uh, prisons and uh, private homes, ev everywhere will be filled with the glory, the image of God. And we are the image of God. But we need to be re-transformed back into that image not portraying the image of the zeitgeist the culture we are in or uh, our personal like preferences but the image of God expressed through our personal character characteristics our special touch God is not ashamed to be known through people he has created us so different on purpose so that his image would be seen in a plethora of of uh, personality and, and 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 ways and stories so you see god does not even present his word just as a law abide the uh, uh, obey this do this do this no he presents himself to the world through a history through a story through a people through us and now we are also together with the written bible we are the letter of god given to the world People look at us, they look at how we live our lives, how we respond to sickness, how we respond to fame, how we treat persons around us. People look at us and read us 
for some, we might be the only Bible they ever read. Uh, so let us display the kingdom of God. Um, I want to read to you. There's so much I want to say about this holy nation. I believe this is the message that God has been deconstructing the old forms for for this message to come forth now at this time the holy nation the kingdom of god we have not preached it to the full at all i know uh, it has been preached a lot and this is the message that jesus sent his disciples to go and preach in all the villages two and two ahead of himself this is the message that he said, go and as you go preach, the kingdom of God has come near. Then heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leopards, drive out demons. For nothing you have received it, give it also for nothing. So this is the message of Jesus. And we should not... Um, we should not just look at what is uh, visible, but what is invisible for its eternal. But here in Second Corinthians, he says, um, Do not be yoked together with unbelievers, um, for we are the temple of the living God. And listen, as God has said, I will live with them. And walk among them and I will be their God and they will be my people my nation therefore come out of them and be separate or holy says the Lord touch no unclean thing and I will receive you I will be a father to you and you will be my sons and daughters says the Lord Almighty. Since therefore we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. When bad things happen in the earth, it is time for us to say, okay, it's time for us to rise up now. It's time for us now to preach and build and manifest the kingdom of God. There is a holy nation rising in the earth. The holy nation consists of kings and priests. It's a kingdom of priests. People who believe in Jesus as God, who knows him, who have been baptized into his death and risen up to his new life. The Holy Bible says that if we believe in him, we are being one spirit with him. And when we are baptized into his death, all our sins are cleansed away and we are being risen up to a new life in his spirit and in his power with the life that he had, his life is in his blood, okay? Life is in the blood, the Bible says. And his life, heaven's life, Jesus' life is in his blood. We can get that. So we will have his life on the inside to live it out. And wherever we go, we then manifest the atmosphere and the culture, the language and the powers of the age to come. Hebrews 5, 6 or 6, 5, I don't remember. But it says there that we who believe in Jesus and follow him, we have tasted of the powers of the age to come. It says that we partake of his spirit and we have tasted of the goodness of the Kalimatullah, of the word of God. Uh, and we have been enlightened. So all these things we, we have when we believe in Jesus. 
And it is true. We have so much and we have been forgiven. We have been loved so much. We are being transformed back to his image whenever we contemplate the Lord's glory. And wherever his spirit is in us, wherever his spirit is, where his word is read aloud, where he's believed, there is freedom, liberation, deliverance. There is freedom. That's what we have come to give. And Jesus says, as the Father sent me to the world, I am sending you. So we are sent with his life, with his light, with his love, with his power, with his freedom to the earth. And he says, I made you <clears throat> a light for all nations so that my salvation, freedom, deliverance and Yeshua shall reach to the ends, borders and extremities of this earth. Go, I will send you far away to the nations to say to the captives, come out to those in darkness, be free. Come forth, show yourselves. You are called out of darkness into his wonderful light. You are called to the kingdom. You are called to be part of the people of God. You are called to carry the passport, the citizenship of the kingdom of God. And everyone who calls on the name of Jesus, of Yahweh, shall be saved. So if you believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord Yahweh, that is God, and you want him to be your Lord, and you confess with your mouth, saying Jesus is Lord, you believe that he was risen from the dead, then you have gone out of darkness into light. Then you have gone from death to eternal life, and you have the citizenship. Your name is then written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And that's, I think, a history book, a diary. The Book of the Life of the Lamb. The Lamb's Book of Life or the Book of the Life of the Lamb. Are you in his life? Is he in your life? then you are a part and a citizen of the new nation, the holy nation that's rising up quicker than anyone can know.